Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and we are ready for activity number 13 in our Tetrix Prism programming guide. In the previous activities, we have worked with our uh, Prism basically just driving and then we added the sensors to make our robot smart and we work with the line finder sensor. Now in this activity, we're gonna look at the ultrasonic sensor and see how it can react with our robot and make our robot smart with that type of sensor. So during this activity, the idea is that we are going to um, access and read the, the ultrasonic sensor and drive toward an obstacle or a, a wall. And when we get to a set distance away from that wall, we're gonna make our robot stop. Fairly simple, but again, we're gonna make sure we understand how our prism works with the hardware and the sensor to make that all happen. So let's gather our materials, make sure we've got everything we need. We have our task spot built with the prism mounted on top. We've got our battery charged. We've got our USB cable to make sure we can talk from the computer to our robot. We've got our computer and we've got our software launched. So let's go ahead and open up our sketch. Let's go to our software. Let's launch it. Once we have it launched, let's go to File, Examples, and we're gonna go down to the Tetrix Prism Library. This time we're gonna look for TaskBot Activity 13, Drive to a Wall. Again, we've talked about the idea that hopefully working through examples is a good way to get actually familiar and understand how all of these um, things work within the, the coding world of the Arduino software. So let's open up our sketch, let's move it over here and let's look at our comments because again, we figured out the comments help explain what's supposed to happen in our sketch. We can see at the top here that the program is intended to use the ultrasonic sensor connected into sensor port uh, D4 to detect an obstacle It's uh, in its path. And as soon as it gets less than 25 centimeters away, it's going to stop our robot. Now, um, let's go ahead and connect it to our robot. Let's download this and see what happens. Let's go ahead, power on our robot make our connection. And you can see that I'm doing this in just a little bit different order than I did before. That's okay. As long as we understand that before I communicate between the two devices, I do have to have my prism powered on. So I made my connections. I'm gonna go into my software. Let's verify first. Software shows that it's okay. Program is good. And now I'm going to upload that. So click my upload button. Look for my data light. Should be giving me that. Tell me that it's done. I've got my solid green light here, ready to go. I don't have enough room up here on the table to do this, so I'm gonna unplug my robot. I'm gonna take it to the floor. Now remember, I'm gonna drive toward an, uh, either an obstacle or the wall. So, gotta have either an obstacle or a wall, but we're gonna set this down and we're gonna try this and see what happens. Okay, did it do what we expected it to do? I hope so. And if it didn't, there are some troubleshooting things that you can uh, look at within the, the ultrasonic sensor. We talked about troubleshooting tips for the uh, line finder, and this is a similar thing here. We want to start with connection. We know our code was good because our code actually uploaded to our robot find. It was an example. We know it should all work. Let's check and make sure we've got a good connection with our cable into the prism connection good into the, the uh, ultrasonic. There are some things you need to keep in mind with uh, the ultrasonic. This is a sound wave going out. So if you don't have a good surface for it to bounce against, uh, it usually doesn't do very good against a soft surface like cloth or something like that. That would absorb the signal. Something hard, either a book, uh, a box, something that it can bounce against, the wall, that's good. Um, if the wall has a curtain in front of it, might not be so good. So think about those type of things. If you need to, you can run back to the getting started activity with the introducing the ultrasonic sensor, open up the serial monitor, make sure you're getting valid readings from the serial monitor and make sure that everything is working there. Then come back and let's try this activity again. Um, once you've all done all that and you've got your activity working, let's look a little bit closer at the sketch because there are there is a new uh, structure element that we're using in this particular program that we haven't seen before. We've seen the if statements, but we haven't seen an if else statement. 
And an if else statement actually just gives you a little bit more control um, using a single test. And then based on that single test, we can actually output to different behaviors. So if I look in my if else statement, my test is basically looking at my prism read sonic sensor uh, and <laughs> looking and see if it is greater than 25 uh, centimeters. And then in, if it is, I'm gonna set my motor power to a certain level. And this is just basically a driving forward behavior. My comment tells me that out to the side, if a distance is greater than 25 centimeters, do this. If it's else, in other words, if it's a different, um, if it's not, doesn't meet that first test condition of my if statement, I'm gonna do this action or the else action. And that is, I'm going to actually stop my motors. And that's what the comments tell me to do. And I could uh, vary that, I could vary the speed uh, if I need to, to see if that impacts the behavior. But that's basically a new feature that we're adding into um, the programming structure that gives you a little bit more control, again, looking at a single test. So I hope that makes sense. Um, let's talk a bit about the, the real world connections. This goes back to uh, some of the new cars that we see out on the road that have the obstacle or, or the accident avoidance. You see that as a buzzword out on the commercials where if the driver's not paying attention and, and really not following things, following a vehicle too close or something runs out in front of it, the car will sense if there's an obstacle in the way, cause the car to brake. This is the exact same thing. So if you've successfully programmed your robot to that, you know what um, the automakers have to do to program that on their car. Let's talk about uh, some of the pops, possible STEM connections that we could con um, discuss based on an activity like this. Um, we know that the ultrasonic is using a sound wave to um, basically talk about distance. So uh, we can talk about the speed of sound, the competition of sound waves, or composition of sound waves. We could talk about sensor calibration. What's that involved with that? Again, what's it take to actually, from an engineering standpoint, to design a robot that would actually do that type of behavior? And then math. Math, there's all kinds of strong uh, math connections about calculating the distance and based on the speed of sound. So lots of math connections there. So where are you going to take that? Um, for hacking the code activity or making this uh, your own, again, I, we want to encourage you to, to create this sketch from scratch. See if you can duplicate that same behavior. And then once you've done that, change it up a little bit. Maybe you can make a different behavior when it sees the wall. Maybe you can um, make it slow down um, and back up. Maybe you can um, change the, the distance that it, it sees something or, or play with the type of obstacles that it takes. To, can it see a can at the same distance it sees that? that box or play with that and see how that impacts the behavior of your robot. But again, the idea is that you're gonna explore how the sensor works with the hardware, all comes together to make a system. So, hope you found that inspirational, informational, and like we always say, have fun out there, build some robots, come back and see us.